and we are live. Ooh, that was nice. Here on Mark Allen Cooks. Uh, hi, uh, welcome to our show. We are excited because um, a couple of months ago I met a young woman who has a wonderful love for food, and I invited her to be on our show. Her name is Catherine Hunter Blyden. She's a marketing maven. And we're going to meet her, talk about what she does, and we'll talk about her love for food right now as um, Mark Allen Cooks takes to the air. Here we go. We are going to be making a salmon cake tonight. And... This is not like the salmon cake or uh, cakes that uh, your grandmother may have made because we're going to be using fresh salmon, okay? Uh, we're going to bring in our, our, our new friend, uh, Catherine uh, Hunter Blyden, right now, who is a marketing maven, and that's how we met. How are you, Catherine? I am well. How are you, Mark? I'm fine. Um, thank you for joining us. We're going to have some wine. Uh, what are you drinking? I have a Salmon Maw Blanc, which I think goes nicely with salmon cakes. And I am you... drinking... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm drinking something. I thought this was a Vouvray when I picked it up at the, at the store. And it's really Vouvray. And... and um, it's, it's an inexpensive bottle. This was uh, 16. When I bought it the first time, it was 9 or 10, and it was on sale. I should have bought more. We liked it. It's a nice white wine. And, um, it is a Vouvray. It is a Vouvray. Vouvray. But it, is that, what do you like? What's the? Viognier. Viognier. Yeah, this, yeah, this is a, v yes. I got them confused. But it is a Vouvray. It's a Vouvray. And we liked it. It's nice and crisp. And I'm going to say um, uh, cheers to you cheers. and to Carol. And we'll drink. If you were watching us now, or even if you're watching a pre-recording, please, you can make a comment and let us know how we're doing, okay? Um, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, I'm going to take another swig because it's been a rough last 40 minutes i goofed so i'm <laughs> i'm relaxing here mm. that is nice all right um have you always liked food and and been i'll call you a foodie i don't know if i've always been a foodie i i think uh, fortunately for my youngest in the last 20 years or so i've really gotten into cooking and he's one of the biggest benefactors. <laughs> it's, it, do you find cooking relaxing and fun? Absolutely. I, it is my creative outlet. Um, I don't draw, I don't sing, I don't dance. <laughs> so it is the thing that I do to relax at the end of the day. And I love it. I, just like me. Yes, thank you. It's what I do. I don't... We. we um, when we're at a wedding or some kind of an affair and there's dancing, the music stops at my waist. So I, I, I'm, I don't dance at all. I do dance. I should correct myself. I do okay. dance. I, I hear music and I do dance. I just don't necessarily do it well, but here I am. I'm, I, I get that. Uh, I wanted to do a shout out to my friend John Harper, who's been telling me to get... An apron. So, John, we finally got an apron. We've got a new logo. We're really excited about that. Norm Ross, our, our good friend and art director for like 35 years, you helped inspire this, Norm. You really did. And I appreciate that. If you have comments, you can uh, leave us comments in, the, um, in our comment window. All right. Let us do some, some cooking here. Um, what should I do first? Well, I have a comment on the apron. I like the oh, rabbit yeah. ears. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Say that again. I like the rabbit ears. Oh, thank you. I have to tell you, you helped make this. I did. You did. Um, 
a couple of weeks ago, I participated in Catherine's uh, networking group online, and we talked about AI. So I typed into an AI program, Mark Allen Cooks, a TV show. This is what it came out with. Ah, okay. Very, I, very I, cool. I forgot. You, I forgot to give you that shout out too. So I like thank that you. Story. So we're going to make these things. Um, I'm going to take. Uh, do I need a bowl, Carol? I, let me just. Yeah. In yeah, I'm going to take a bowl, and I'm going to put in the the ingredients and uh i thought i had where is it oh there they are i don't measure Catherine. are you a measurer or do you just kind of fake it uh, i don't measure with measuring utensils but i you know i eyeball it yeah all right so we're going to put in uh, three tablespoons oh okay of of this yeah oh I'm sorry. Carol is ahead of me as usual. So we have panko uh, breadcrumbs. What's the difference? Do you know the difference between panko breadcrumbs and regular breadcrumbs? Oh, I don't. I know that they're crunchier either. when they cook. I don't know. <laughs> they're, crisper, they're a little lighter. Now, you're not going to put that whole, that no. whole cup into no. the mixture. You're only I'm going really to do not. Um, well, we're having a lot of fun because <laughs> Mark just spilled. So I'm going to fix this right now. All right. Carol, this was three quarters, three tablespoons of panko, not. Um, so that's about three tablespoons. Yeah, three tablespoons to stir, but you'll need the other panko to coat it later. Uh, let's see. All right, we'll leave that there. So I'm going to add uh, parsley. And we like a lot of parsley, so we'll do that. There is nothing better than chopped fresh parsley. It smells so good. That's so I have some scallions that Carol has kindly chopped for us. And uh, shallots. Okay. Um, can you get me the uh, mustard and the um, cayenne and the pepper, please? And the must, yeah, the mustard. So I'm going to mix it, these up. Was is this a recipe that you grew up with? Uh, or did you invent it yourself? I did not. I did not. This is a borrowed recipe. It's a fantastic recipe, but it is borrowed. Okay. Thank you. Um, I love Dijon mustard. I really do. Um, and... I have to tell you that my favorite Dijon mustard so far is Trader Joe's. And the reason is it's a good price and it's really from Dijon, France. So you can't go wrong okay. with that. I did not know that. All right. We got that in. Now I've got, oh, lemon juice. Lemon juice. Now, the lemon juice today it's coming from my lemon tree and it's a Meyer lemon and it has a slightly sweeter taste than a regular lemon I think that'll work fine I wish I had a lemon tree I actually have a lime tree do you we'll trade why don't we trade yeah. trade some citrus I'm reaching. I'm sorry. You put out the. Oh, this. We have this new squeezer, and we love it. 
Oh, I have one of those. I love yeah. it too. Yeah, I took it out. Oh, I still have it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to eat the seeds. Yes, we don't want the seed. All right, we have the lemon in there. You probably um, need a little more lemon juice, but do you have a more little lemon bit in? more? Oh, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's just another half. All right. So you are a marketing maven making her drink. <laughs> <laughs> have you always been in marketing? I have been in marketing my entire career. So almost three decades now. Oh my. All yes. right, we've got, uh, we need some mayo. You need mayo. And we are putting in, let's see, how much mayo? Just, well, she started this at 10, yes. That's what, Carol just said, You might, if you've been in, in uh, marketing for 10 years, or 20, uh, 30 years, you must have started at 10 years old. You're, you're so Yes, young. let's go with that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Carol is, is really good at that. Okay. Now, the other thing I have over here is some fresh salmon. So, Mark. Yes, ma'am. You need a little salt and pepper in your in your mixture there. Okay. And as much cayenne as you want. You can put none. You can put a little bit, but it's nice for a little extra punch. I love cayenne. So we'll put that in. That looks really spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That looks a little. Yes. That looks really spicy from from my angle. All right. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the salmon. Now this is a uh, wild caught, and I just want to get make sure I've got the name right. The kind of salmon that we have. Um, it's coho salmon, and I had it skinned, and I'm gonna. We're gonna be putting this mixture mixture into the uh, food processor that I have over here. You will hear the food processor. We ran out of camera space, so. So if you cut those in small chunks, that looks much smaller. It looks a little bit smaller than an inch. Then you don't want to process it as much. You don't want to puree it. You want chunks of salmon that are about a quarter of an inch. Got it. So that's going to go really fast based on that thin slice you have there. I'm cutting them too small. They're, they're small. That's fine. You just don't want to process them, process them as long. All right. Now, do I I put the mixture and the salmon into the uh, processor or just the salmon? No, just, just the salmon. salmon. All right. Uh, for those who are interested. Uh, Catherine is coming to us uh, from uh, Pasadena, California. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop up the salmon. In, in a single batch? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I have a big... Yeah, I know. It. I'm doing it this way because... It's it fine, Mark. I do it in a single batch. Too, but I also tend to cut the recipe in half. And I'm just going to take this out because we need it again. Okay. So what we'll do next 
is we're going to pulse this. Now, you don't want it, we want it coarsely chopped, correct? Right. You want to get pieces that are down to about a quarter inch. If some of it is smaller than that, that's fine. And even if some chunks are bigger than that, just okay. don't want to create it. I'm going to take this off and show it to you. How's that? That looks pretty good. All right, good. So I can work in your kitchen. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. think so. All right. Um, I'm assuming Maybe. that I take the salmon and I mix it and put it in the bowl. That's it. It's okay. very simple. This is great salmon. By the way, the salmon was on sale at Whole Foods. And nice. Like a good salmon. Yeah. There's no color added to it. I'm gonna move this here. And you're just going to combine it. Just mix yeah. until it's combined. I found a little bone. I actually found that. I found bones. Have you found them in uh, canned salmon? Have you ever done that? I don't really use canned salmon. I don't. I don't most of the time. Every now and then, if I want something different, quick, I'll make a tuna salad and then grab a can of salmon salad off the. Uh, off the shelf. Okay. Little pieces there. Okay. All right. We're all we're we're pretty much mixed. You are um, mixed. You are ready. Mixed. You've done all ready. the hard work. You know. We're we're almost ready. I, I need a break. <laughs> this is hard work. It is the easiest and tastiest salmon cakes you'll ever make. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm assuming putting uh, some oil. Into so, the, uh, oh no, we're gonna no. You 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 no. tell me. <laughs> you're you're gonna shape your patties now. You're gonna take that and shape those. You have a, a cookie sheet, a baking sheet nearby. Yes. You can put this on. We do. We have. And so uh, you're gonna put some parts so they're just paper out. And I'm gonna we'll take a scoop and shape it with my hand, huh? That works. That works. How thick? About an inch thick and about three, a little less than three inches. How's that? Like, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Could you wet that one, Carol? <laughs> Thank you. You could also use a mold if you wanted them nice and oval. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make four of these right now. And then we're going to talk some marketing while we heat up our oil in just a minute. Now, I, these already, um, they don't have any smell like the um, canned salmon would. Right? You cut so, out a little bit, Mark. You don't have a smell like a... Yeah. All right. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to heat up our pan and I'm going to put um, some canola oil in. Now, there's controversy about canola oil, right? But it is, most chefs really like it. Uh, it has a high uh, heat point without burning. You can heat that um, low for now, but you do want to coat your salmon with the rest of the panko before you put ah, it in that pot. Got it. We just wanted to heat that up so that we're ready. And then I have someplace. So oh, there they are. So I'm going to put the panko on both sides. Right. On both sides. You can put it in a plate and cover it completely, or you can do that. That's another way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. We had the pie tin out. I'm going to turn this around. I like a fair amount of panko so that it gets nice and crispy. And it adheres well because of the mayo. So these are going to, because of the, the, the panko, these will be golden brown. Yes. I mean, theoretically, if I do this halfway right. So we have Hopefully those. they will be golden brown. And um, this is Mark Allen Cooks. You're watching either recorded or live. Oh, good. Yes, to flip it. Thank you, Carol. Good idea. So let's check the oil. It is not quite ready. It is and you have high. that on medium high? I put it on high, high to heat. Okay. But I'll turn it down. You think I should turn it down? You want to turn it down so that you don't overcook your fish. Got it. Should be ready in a, in a minute. Let's, uh, what do you do? You're, as I said, I'm making her drink. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to be stressful uh, to, for you. Uh, no, it's Dr. fine. Uh, it's fine. This, I love that I have this excuse to have a glass at 4.30. Yeah, it's yeah. Carol says her too. Wine is perfect, Carol. You'll love it. Uh, normally, we would Carol would be drinking with us. Um, oh, you are. Oh, okay, good. I'm. I didn't know. Here, wait. There. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. This is nice. It's got a touch of sweet. I like a, I personally like a drier wine. But um, it, it, this worked out really well. All right, I'm going to take these over, and I'm assuming I stick them in the hot oil. And your oil is hot enough. It's, it, you don't want it. You don't want to put it in there before it's hot enough because you're going to just. Right. It's going to be in there just two minutes before you flip it. I think it's hot enough. All what right. do you think? Right. So here That's we go. Good. Can you hear that? Ooh. So this is where I tell Alexa to give me a timer. Let me, <laughs> there. Yeah. Oh, will you time it? <laughs> How long should we time this for? So it's only two minutes on the first side. Okay. Okay, Carol's watching. All right. She, okay. Um, so tell us what you do. I mean, you work for a, 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 a big company, I believe, don't you? I work um, for a mid-sized company, um, a management consulting firm, and I work as a chief marketing officer for my clients. You're a... A, a CMO. A CMO. Right. Yeah. And 30 years. So has marketing changed? I mean, we when I was with your, you on your group a couple weeks ago, last month, um, and I couldn't make it yesterday because I was doing a radio show at the time, and I have to change that up so I can participate more. 
but marketing to me has changed because I'm really a marketer. I just use video as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, now there's AI, you know, uh, artificial intelligence. You, you know, it's like Siri. Hi, Siri. Hi, Carol. You know, it, it, Alexa. Uh, Alexa. Yeah. Uh, if you're a, a Google person, um, has it changed that much? In 30 years? Technology has changed marketing drastically. I, I, earlier in my career, I can remember placing ads in yellow pages, in books. We actually had an agency that handled all of the placement countrywide for a fairly a Fortune 100 company that I was working for. And they, we would go down to their office in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and they had a room just full of yellow pages from across the country. Those don't exist anymore, do they? I I don't know. um, Our mutual friend, Devin Blaine, sent me a thing on on 20-year-olds. I don't know if you got it or not. If you didn't, I'll send it to you. Check these. Um, I think they need just a little bit more, and then I'll flip them. Um, But, you know, um, young people, I love you young people, they don't, they don't remember, they don't know about a ye- yellow pages. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's like, how do you use a phone that's plugged into the wall? <laughs> they, a, a what? A paper map. A paper map. We saw that the other night. Na- yeah, a paper map, you know. Um, uh, everybody uses Google now. All right, I think we can flip these. You tell me. Catherine. All right. Well, we're definitely two minutes in. So if the oil was hot enough, they should be ready to flip. Yeah. All right. So here we go. We're going to see if they're golden brown. Oh, beautiful. Now we used a, just about a pound of salmon. Um, which is enough for like four people. I don't know if it's the light. It, two of them look dark and two look light. It it's must funny. Be the light. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. There, you know what it is, Carol? It's the sun. No. No, this is the sun. Trust me. It's the sun. So you can't see it. It's still bright. These these two are cooked more. Get that last blind, please. There you go. Here I'll see. How's that? Can you see it now? I mean, they look good. This one is a little bit not as cooked as these three. This one is cooked more. Right. So you can leave it in maybe a little bit longer than the other two, but it needs two or three minutes on this top, this side, and that's it. Then you're going to transfer it to hopefully a plate with paper towels, right? Yes. Can I have a paper towel, please? Thank you. I've got this little one right here. Which one? This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to take, whoops, this one out. I don't think they're ready to come out yet, Mark. No? Okay. No. I don't think it's been two minutes. You need two or three minutes on this side. Got it. Okay. And you want that crispness other, as opposed to a little bit so soggy. I'm going to ask you a personal question, and, and that is, <laughs> In your kitchen, what are three items that you just can't live without? Oof, uh, three items I can't live without. I I have little mini whisk. I'm constantly whisking something, putting aerating something or whisking some kind of sauce. So I can't live without my my two little whisks. Um, I have a citrus trumpet. Do you know what that is? No. You screw it into a uh, citrus, lemon, lime, orange, any of them, and squeeze. And it 
gives you your juice, but it keeps the seeds in. So it's, so it's better than what I bought. No, I have one of those too. I, I'm a gadget. In the kitchen, I have every gadget you can yeah. imagine. <laughs> but the trumpet is just fantastic for juicing. If you're adding it to, like you just did, to the um, a, a mixture like the salmon mixture, but it's also nice just to to spread it over the top of a cooked Got piece it. Of as well. I will tell um, I, 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 and and th so that's two. What's number three? So I have tongs that are adjustable. Um, two sets. One that doesn't have a, a soft edge to to take care of my um, pans that I don't want to scratch, and then right. one that has the soft edge. You know, I said that, but I really, really, really love my Dutch uh, Dutch oven. We uh, we were talking to a chef last week our guest chef last week. And when I asked her that question, <laughs> she couldn't live without, um, I think, citrus, berries, and something else, food. And, oh, yeah. it's, and chocolate, it, rather than kitchen gear. Because I thought people would ask for kitchen gear. And we thank our, our friend Jennifer uh, uh, for asking, telling us to ask that question. So let's go back over here. I think I'm going to flip this one over again. Ooh, only a and short while. Cook. You don't want to overcook it. This one, I think, is done. I suspect both of those browner ones are ready. And I think I can take... I'm going to flip this one. Ooh. And I'll flip this one. And I think this one can come off. Oh. I would take it out. Well, I have one, and this is the most Mark, important part. Oh, they should all come out? Okay. Yeah, are you going to have some really overcooked fish? Uh, and we're draining that a little bit. I'll turn this off. Now, this is the most fun part of the show, at least for me. I'm going to take you this need the, one. You need the lemon, the lemon. Oh, yes, I can see that. Thank you, Carol. I'm going to, well, I'm using my hand. Whoa, that's hot. So I have some lemon, and I'm going to move the, well, uh, Um, these are my notes and cheat sheet. Um, I'm going to squeeze some lemon and I'll be careful about seeds. Just a little so you can keep it crisp. And what I really like about this part of the show is I get to taste it now. Great. Right. Moment of truth. So, I'm going to ask Carol to pour me just another splash of wine. Thank you. Good. And uh, I've got the wine here. And let's try this. Okay. Here we go, folks. All right. Oh. This is fabulous. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, everybody. Just <laughs> let me alone. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my. Um, and with the wine, oh, that looks good. You know what we should do, Catherine? You should come out here and we can cook together, or we'll come to you and you can, we'll all cook together. We'll bring Devin out too. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? 
Maybe we'll record that. Um, I thank you for your for for playing with us today, and um, I really really appreciate your uh, your participating with us. Thank you. Will you hold on a moment? Absolutely. All right. Uh, oh, I uh, you know what I forgot to ask you. Will you please come back and do this again? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll give you something more difficult to do next time. All right, good. This was really easy. You know, if you're alone, if you're at, at home and your kitchen is where you stack your pizza boxes, okay, you can do this. Trust me. I just did it. We did it in about 35 minutes. And because we were chatting and talking um, and maybe a little disorganized, it took a little bit longer. These are delicious. They're healthy and really, really easy for you to make. All right. Uh, we're going to ask Catherine to hold on. And I'm going to tell you about next week. You know, food is art. And next week, Nita Patel is joining us. She's an artist. She has shown her work throughout the world. She grew up in Texas. Um, she uh, has uh, art galleries. Uh, uh, just can't wait for her art. And we're going to talk about art and food because Nita, I guess her message, her, her meaning of life after spending years as a uh, psychologist in business teaches people that art can heal the world. And that's what we all want to do. So I'm going to eat my dinner right now. Thank you for watching. We'll be back uh, next week. We'll see you then with Nita. Bye-bye. Mm.